I don't know what's more beautiful, <laughs> Vince or the background at PNC Park. Look at that tan from South Beach. <laughs> That's just the olive oil oozing through my skin, Tony. That's all that is. All right, Vince, let's be honest. You go to every ballpark in Major League Baseball. You look at the NFL. You can't talk about arenas. Is there any backdrop better than PNC Park? Hard to beat for sure. I mean, this is just spectacular with the bridges, and you've got downtown Pittsburgh right in your eye. It really is an outstanding uh, place to watch a baseball game, and they got it right. I mean, you can walk to it across the bridges from downtown. Uh, You know, it's it's spacious. I think they laid it out properly, whereas – Go someplace like Globe Life Field in Arlington. It's so chopped up. They got a little picnic area behind home plate. It looks really awkward to me, at least to my eye, looking at a stadium. This is they did a lot of things right here. And it, you know, with the uh, with the backdrop that you see, it's just spectacular. And the great thing too is that, you know, right field, the right field wall, it's is to no surprise, 21 feet high in honor of Roberto Clemetti. So they did a lot of things to honor the history of this great franchise, and that's certainly a part of it. But this place is spectacular. Yeah, we were just talking to Derek Shelton, the manager of the Pirates, and it's like, man, when when Cody puts the when Cody put the picture up, and it I mean, it actually looks like you're looking at a painting or a picture. That's how beautiful it is. But when you're that high up and you have the camera, you realize, wow, that that poke into Allegheny River, wow, that is impressive. It is. It and it's only happened uh, like eight or nine times in the history of a PNC man. Park. They don't have like a splash meter like you see in San Francisco. Although one of the uh, Pirates players, Jack Sawinski, hit it twice last week for the Pirates when they were in San Francisco. Uh, uh, Daryl Ward was the first visiting player that hit one on the fly in a, into the Allegheny. And Garrett, I'm losing his, I can't remember his first name, uh, was the guy that, that was the first guy to hit one out for the Pirates years ago. So G- Garrett Jones? Garrett Jones, there you go. Garrett Jones. I remember the, all the bad Pirates. There you go, yeah. I forgot I've got the resident pirate historian in the booth with me. So, not Bill Madlock or no. not Willie Stargell no. or Dave Parker. No. Or, no. None of those guys. So no. Kent Colby, is he coming out of the bullpen today? I don't think he is. And, uh, you know, I know you talk with Derek about this. Their bullpen's outstanding. Yeah. It's just, I mean, David Bednar is an absolute beast on the mound. He'll you know, pitch for w- Team USA and the WBC. And not very many closers have three pitches, but he does with that 97 fastball curveball and the great split. So, it's a challenge, certainly. You don't want to get to that bullpen, uh, not to that part of their bullpen anyway, if the A's hope to get some momentum going here in Pittsburgh. All right, I want to go around the league with you because I love doing that because as a play-by-play guy, you do follow all of baseball. Um, what, what what do you make of this? The Texas Rangers outscored the Mariners and that great rotation 30-8 to so far this season. It's the 16th time they've scored at least 10 runs, tying them with the 1939 Yankees for the most in the first 58 games in the modern era. So you've got Seattle. Everybody loves Seattle, and they've got all this talent, and they got all this pitching, and all of a sudden, Texas has just mowed through them. They're in first place over Houston by three and a half. What are we now making out of the Texas Rangers here in early June? Well, two things for me. Well, three things. Number one, uh, Bruce Bochy at the top of the list. He, he brings just a different air when he's inside your dugout and inside your clubhouse. I think we're seeing that proven once again. His history is is as good as just as a lot of people in the seat that he's been in for years. And even though he's been out for three years, he hasn't skipped a beat. So that's at the top of the list for me. Number two, Corey Seager. He comes back. He's off the uh, IL, and he's got like. 30 RBIs in 10 games, something re- – not that number, but something ridiculous since he's come off the Player IL. Player of the month. Yeah, so he 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 stepped in, didn't miss a beat, and that just really lengthened that powerful lineup. And then you have to go with the pitching. Their pitching has been outstanding. And Nathan Ovaldi joined Shane McClanahan as an eight-game winner yesterday uh, in the in the league that leads the majors in that category. So – and this is a, a rotation minus Jacob DeGrom right now. The fact that they're doing that with – the guy that's arguably their their best pitcher, at least their most talented pitcher when he's available, uh, speaks volume. So if, if you're asking me about them, uh, that's impressive. And Bryce Miller, who just mowed down the A's twice. And look, you know, the A's lineup doesn't have the same kind of firepower that the Yankees or the Rangers have. And those are the last two teams that he faced. And he got it handed to him. 
as a veteran offensive lineup would do against a young pitcher, even somebody with the dynamic stuff that Bryce Miller has. So that's a learning curve for him as well. But uh, Texas, I think, is for real. And I think they're going to be in this thing for the long haul. And, you know, for the Astros to catch them, and they've already beaten the Astros at a head-to-head meeting, uh, it's going to be quite a summer. Yeah, no doubt about it. And now we're, you know, now that we got past Memorial Day, and no, all the it's early people have to go away, and now they have to really focus on what your record is. The, the next two months, it's about how do we get better? And I try and explain to people all the time. This is kind of a two-part question, but I try and explain – People want to think it's money ball because they've watched Brad Pitt pick up the phone and go, hey, Sabe, Sabe, send me this guy. Okay, I'll send you that guy. It takes time. Trades take time. There's a lot of conversations. There's a lot of, hey, I'm looking at your organization. You look at my organization. Just talk about these. It's just not one phone call and we're flipping guys. There's a lot that goes into trades, and that's why you got to start working the phones. Like right now, you got to be working the phones. Well, I agree, Tony, and I think if you look back at, at spring training of last year for the athletics, that's why it was – if you're going to be in the situation that the A's were put in, meaning having to move veteran talent, a talent that was certainly uh, wanted by a lot of clubs, but because there was a lockout and then you come right to spring training and then you couldn't talk to the players all winter, you couldn't set up that kind of give me your best offer in 48 hours kind of situation working clubs against each other. Hey, this club has offered us that. Well. We think we've got something else. Give me a better offer. Or you've got, you know, you've got a, a deadline that you've got to meet because I've got other clubs that are interested. The A's didn't really have that opportunity. So with the talent that they had that was available, uh, you know, with Olsen and with Chapman and with Bassett and with Manaya in spring training and, and eventually with Montas, but more so those first four, having to do that in a short amount of time really was challenging for the A's. It would have been challenging for any organization to try to put something together and feel like they're getting value back. And it's fair to say right now, A's getting value back on those moves is work in progress at the very best. You've got Shane Langoliers up, and he's certainly done well. What the A's have been able to do with the Montas deal with Sears and Waldachuk and Medina, that's impressive. But the other arms, uh, they're slow to come. Other players are slow to come. And that was difficult. So to, to speed up to what you're talking about in 2023, you're right. I think clubs that are certainly in contention are identifying what they can do to get better and and what other clubs and namely a team like the A's with a with veterans like a Ramon Laureano or maybe a veteran out of the bullpen would be an interest to somebody as a as a piece that could be part of a club that can help them if you're a team like the St. Louis Cardinals which is as big a disappointment as any in baseball last in the NL Central last in the National League what are they going to do you know how aggressive will they be willing to be in a city where they are accustomed to winning, how aggressive will John Mozeliak be to to try to jumpstart their situation, whether it's in the dugout or certainly with players, with the roster, to get them moving? So, yeah, I, I think, Tony, that right now you're, you're looking at the two, the two teams, obviously, with their records, the A's and the Royals are the teams that teams are probably taking a very close look at, at some of the players on their major league club and seeing – what they could possibly do to help them. Uh, and aside from that, then you're looking at the other, you know, are the Cardinals going to be a buyer or a seller? Are the Rockies going to be selling, you know, teams of, of that ilk. So it's going to be interesting to see, I, I, you know, there's always, you know, it's the first of August is whatever that date is right then when the trading deadline ends. And last year, the uh, Seattle Mariners, they jumped it. You know, that's how they got Luis Castillo because they made the move with the Reds on the 27th of July. They were the first team to move the needle. And then suddenly, with that name off the board, then the panic or the discussions change with other clubs that had him on their board. And now that he's gone, does somebody else move to the top of their board? How do they put that together? So you definitely have to be prepared. You have to be ready to strike. And that's one thing the A's always were good at, Tony. When when the A's were in contention, make no mistake, Billy Bean and David Force, they were aggressive, and they went after players to improve their stretch drives. And that's what other clubs have to make that determination on right now. Yeah, we love the trading deadline, but we also love how things are working in baseball, and a lot of teams are in this thing with the expanded playoffs. It means more teams, more fun in the summer, more people have a chance. I Some people don't like expanded playoffs. I would debate them that every sport has expanded and every sport has gotten better because of it, especially from the fan standpoint. 
And But it does hurt the trading deadline because you start to wonder, so many buyers, not a lot of sellers, and the sellers aren't that great. That's that's kind of the problem, right? It's like you look at the sellers. I mean, even even our own club, it's like there's not a whole lot. You know, if this is if this is the store here, Vince, and you got all these buyers, uh, the the cupboards are kind of bare. They are, but there are other clubs, and sometimes you can you can deal strength with strength with teams that are actually contending. And the big question, you know, following up on what you're talking about with the extra playoffs, who's going to be Philadelphia this year? Because Philadelphia was last team in. Now, I know you've talked about it with the NHL. And with the NBA, with the Heat, and with the Panthers, last yeah, team you, in. And you were just, they're, they're you so were just living it in South Florida. Right, right. Two eight seats in the NBA and hockey. So teams, you know, the question is, how long do they hold on? How long do they believe they can stay in this thing? And it's going to be, it's going to be longer than you know what you would think about other times. I, I still think you can identify four or five clubs of which the A's are a part of. You could say the Cubs are a team. You could say the Rockies are a team. You say the Royals are a team. Uh, maybe even the White Sox, depending if they don't continue to push toward the 500 mark. Those are teams that do have players with major league pedigree and major league success. That would certainly be uh, a group that you would want to have some interest in. All right. Cuban food in South Florida. You had to have, what, what is this that you have to have here in Pittsburgh? Well, there's two things. There's pierogies, yeah. which we haven't had yet. And that'll be tomorrow, but you got to go to Permanente brothers, which is just this obnoxious sandwich full of it's first of all, it's white bread. Who, I mean, who even eats white bread anymore is beyond me. Old school just, right there. And then just a big hunk of, take your pick, roast beef, pastrami, turkey, ham. And then they cram, literally, they cram the French fries in the sandwich. And they take the top piece of the other piece of the white bread and slam it down. And they shove it right to you. And they say, five ninety five or whatever it costs. And then you sit there either at the counter, which is the official way to do it, or you sit at the table like Cody did today with Alex. And you have your obnoxious sandwich. And you probably... I've taken them. They probably already taken a two hour nap after that food today. I would imagine. Wow. He forgot That's the, not- he forgot the coleslaw and tomatoes that go on there as well. <laughs> <laughs> True Pittsburgher. He would know. That sounds like something I used to do about one forty-five in the morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. But are you TV uh, all week? Um, uh, I'm just, just for here, just for Pittsburgh. I'll be on radio in Milwaukee. But are you doing any radio for the next three games? I am not. All right. Just I, that means I don't have to throw to you at all. That's correct. But I will see you uh, Wednesday. I'll be in at NBC. I'll be with you Wednesday. Looking forward to it, Tony. See you later. You have. I, I would say have a great call. But now that, you know, you're you're pretty and everything. I mean, <laughs> just go out. You know what, Vince? Look good. Play good. Exactly. I've heard that commercial someplace. Look good. Play good. <laughs> all, all right, right buddy. buddy. Have a good call. See you later.